Well, first of all, I wanted to uh, run through a bit about Poincar, uh, about Spaniard whitehead dualities. So if you have a space X and you include it into, so if this is compact, why not compact? If you take an embedding into some D, M, and you take U to be a regular neighborhood, then um, U modulo the boundary of U is the uh, Spaniard Whitehead dual. And I'll put the image there. And the reason it's called dual is that the um, I guess cohomology of X
a normal bundle, uh, and u divided by uh, boundary u is the disk bundle of this vector bundle, <coughs> modulo the sphere bundle. And that's also called the Tom space of the vector bundle. <coughs> Uh, if it's PL, then it's uh, a normal uh, Blanc bundle. <coughs> and the quotient is again the Tom space of the normal Blanc bundle. If it's topological, then uh, it's a approximate vibration. Um, oh, well, this normal block bundle has fibers uh, B, N minus K, uh, M minus N. If it's topological, it's an approximate vibration with approximate fibers, the same thing. If it's an A, N, R homology manifold, It has the same normal structure as the topological manifold. <clears throat> and next we come to the spin act here. So if P, if X is point for A, then this new projection of this pair, u and u, projection to x, is a homotopy of b, m minus n, s, n minus m minus 1 bundle of vibration. So if you take this pair, this projection, and in a formal way make it into a vibration, then the fiber of that vibration um, well, this is a homotopy equivalent. So the fiber of this vibration here would be tractable, but this is uh, the fiber of this is uh, up here. And in fact, this is a characterization. Um, Fiber of mu x is homotopy equivalent to, um, well, let's see, I should see. Mu x is fiber homotopy equivalent to uh, spherical vibration, given only at the x is 1 for x. And that's, that's um, not, not all that hard if you think about this vibration. Uh, you, uh, from boundary u, you make this into a vibration, boundary u to x. Um, well, maybe I won't. Maybe I shouldn't go through that. It's a small calculation and a spectral sequence that has to, uh, that in order to converge, it has to, there, there can't be anything more in the homology of this, of the fiber of this thing than just the fundamental class of this here. Okay, so I want to make, uh, and then if X is a space, um, This has no particular structure, um, but we will just use the same notation anyway. New x is uh, this denotes. Uh, think of it as a normal thing of x, and 
then we could think of the Spaniard wife as Jewel, uh, of M as the Tom stage of the normal thing, whatever it is. You know? The disc bundle modulo this, whatever it is. Not a sphere bundle, but it's a, it's just a division and it doesn't require any particular bundle structure. Okay, so uh, I want to have an official proclamation about what a normal bundle is. A normal bundle is uh, an appropriate bundle plus this the collapse map of the sphere. Suppose you have 
x, which has dimension n, um, c over x is a um, spherical fibration, so I'm thinking, uh, so it's a dk, sk minus 1 vibration. And I'll denote the disk bundle by B of C and the sphere bundle by S of C. And I want to assume that K is bigger than N so that we're in the stable range. Otherwise, I have to introduce another parameter and talk about what, how that other parameter changes. So in order to avoid another parameter, I assume it's a stable range. And, uh, then we have a collapse map to the uh, on to the on the X. <clears throat> well, we've seen a collapse map before. There's this canonical collapse map into the normal thingy. Okay. And the uh, theorem is that this normal collapse and the this canonical collapse into the normal thing is um, is universal. <clears throat> There's a map from this U uh, boundary U, where again U is a regular neighborhood in the n plus k, same n plus k as here. <clears throat> There's a map of pairs um, that commutes up the homotopy with projections. And this collapse map is obtained from this sort of bundle map and the canonical one. So this I'll uh, call this B. And then there's a Tom's map, T, uh, well, U modulo boundary U, which we're thinking of as the Tom's <coughs> of the normal thing. Um, T B goes to the Tom space of C, D, N plus K, modulus boundary, here's P, and here's the canonical row. So any collapse, uh, any uh, map of a disk like this, or a sphere, uh, factors through the canonical one by a sort of bundle map. <clears throat> so, uh, remember this is just the dual. I have a lot of notation to this. The Spaniard Whitehead dual of X. And um, this has the same homology as, as, uh, as X shifted by uh, the Tom isomorphism. So, well, maybe I'll come back to the duality, uh, the duality consequences in a minute. But in particular, if um, X is point A, which means this normal vibration is a homotopy closed to sphere vibration. If X is Poincaré and uh, this is degree one in the sense that P, the image of the fundamental class of the disk, um, when you apply the Tom, a Tom class. Um, 
if that gives you the fundamental class of X, so it's degree one in that sense, then uh, this D is the homotopy equivalent of pairs. And that's a uniqueness theorem for the Spivak model. So it says that, um, so here's the short version. If C has a degree one reduction, so S M plus K in the, the Tom space on C, then there's a bundle, there's a, a, a sphere, fiber homotopy equivalent. with this standard one with the property that um, so uh, well with this with this agreement property so that um, the Tom's map of B applied to P is the canonical row. <coughs> Now that means if you have a spherical reduction like this, you automatically get a sphere, a um, fiber homotopy equivalent of this bundle with the normal bundle of X. Okay. Well, that applies in the normal map situation. So notice that, suppose that M uh, X with a normal bundle of M to C. This is a, okay, this is point array, so this is a normal map. Where X is point array. <clears throat> well, uh, this is a normal bundle. So everybody is supposed to really now know that it has a canonical here, matching these Tom space. So we get D, well if this is what well, these are half dimension N and the co-dimension is K. So we have D N plus K modulo boundary canonical reduction to the Tom space of new M. We map that by uh, this is bundle map is called E. Tom space of E to the Tom space of C, and we get a degree one spherical reduction, uh, which is the data for the previous year. <coughs> so that means there is a um, fiber homotopy equivalence. Well, it produces a specific fiber homotopy equivalent. This is not an existence theorem. It says, well, I should say, this is unique up to homotopy if K is a real data. There's a fiber homotopy equivalent C to the normal bundle of X, which is, you know, this spherical vibration. And therefore, we can think of C, which is a manifold bundle, as a manifold bundle structure on this normal vibration. Our category of manifolds, 
Macross is a, man, a, a bundle of manifolds, a manifold bundle, whatever it is, block bundle, and so forth. It has an underlying P bundle. And so, um, this equivalent of C with the fiber home on top equivalent gives you a list. So uh, these things correspond, by this construction, they correspond exactly to lists. So in the normal map set of X is uh, lists of new uh, X into the Okay, to just sort of reverse this, let me show you. If you have a lift, then you have a manifold bundle structure on the normal vibration. And you, but remember that there's this this mapping onto the top space. So and you can make that transverse. So the M is the transverse inverse image of the zero section and D, D in the disk. So um, so that produces a manifold a manifold in a normal map. Uh, notice the transversality is not phenomenal. So this produces something up to autism uh, within a certain class. And the, the reason that we define the normal math set in terms of specific manifolds and specific bundles is because we want to take one of those specific representative and then work on it, improve it in some way. So we would like to start with a normal math and say, well, it's normally subordinate to a highly connected. <coughs> and that's something. So we want to we work with a specific manifold. Uh, this formulation gives us manifolds, but it doesn't give us a specific manifold. And it's just a really huge pain to try to work on a specific inverse image. Uh, so this is a great formulation as a homotopy theory, but it, it's not the one that you work on geometrically. And there's one more uh, point. If, if you have a particular list, then you can classify other the difference between that lift and other lifts by mapping the fiber. So if we fix a lift, <coughs> then any other lift, L minus L zero. Uh, is classified by a map into the fiber uh, G mod M. So, if you choose a
and then subtract off the normal. Uh, that gives us a particular reference list of the normal bundle. <coughs> as a spherical vibration, as a reference list. And then, um, if we take differences, then that gives us a description of this. We get L into structures on M to homotopy classes of M into G over whatever manifold category, and then to the next. And that's the description that's most often given. It's very compact. There is a, a canonical mistake, so a standard <coughs> mistake, <coughs> is that this description, well, you can forget that it depended on a base point, a choice of a base point. And that's a, that's a beginner's error, I guess. That's not the one, that's not the one that sophisticated people make. <laughs> the sophisticated mistake is to lose track of this mysterious bundle isomorphism. <laughs> right? you, have a, you have a vector bundle. And, oh, I see. I see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, if you have a, a normal map, then you have a vector bundle, and if it's to a manifold, you have this vector bundle. Um, but then there's this mysterious fiber homotopy equivalent. So the standard mistake is you have n to m. The normal bundle of m is trivial. So think about smooth one. So it's the pullback. Um, yeah. So it's the full back of the trivial bundle. <coughs> and now suppose we also know that M also has a trivial normal bundle. So you have two trivial bundles over M. And what could be more natural than to identify those two trivial bundles? But so there's an obvious, there's an obvious isomorphism there, but that's typically not the one that comes from the mystery. Which means that if you take, if you do the sphere, uh, of the compound structure on this thing, so remember we had this uh, D N plus K modulo boundary mapping into the sum space. And we wanted, um, if we have new m, then we get m as the inverse image. If we get new n, we get n as the inverse image. Well, if you identify these two, if, if the uh, fiber homotopy equivalence was actually the obvious thing, then that would show that m and n are normally equivalent. Right? But what usually happens is that N and N are not normally equivalent, <coughs> which means um, you actually have two different spheres mapping in here, one from, from M and one from N. They are not homotopic, and you follow that back, and that this bundle isomorphism is not the standard one. So the obvious thing is usually not standard. <coughs> so that's the, and that's one reason that I want to emphasize uh, that we want to record the data that, that determines the uh, spherical, the, the uh, bundle, fiber homotopy equivalence, because that makes it a little harder to make this mistake. You know, if you forget about all the spheres and you think of normal, normal bundle as just sort of an abstract thing, then uh, 
it's easier to violate the restrictions that come along. Okay, well, that's <clears throat> that's the um, the usual uh, use of this geometric product theorem, uh, the bundle part of it. So what I want to explain next is another application of it that sort of pushes surgery down one level. So um, manifolds in the surgery uh, is related to temperature. Can I ask one question? Yes. I mean, maybe I just missed it, but why are you calling this the geometric product? Why is it? Well, uh, that's what I'm going to explain now. Ah, okay. I mean, usually the focus is on the bundle thing that it produces, so you think of it as a unique <laughs> thing to the spit that bundle. But um, this But the map it produces, even notice that this did not require x to be point red. And so I'm going to make, make something of that. All right. That's the next part of the story. So we're going to sort of um, push sur surgery down one dimension, <clears throat> or down one level, uh, from manifold to point array. And the consequences of this, uh, one, one is to have a uh, single instruction. A, a nice geometric view of the Renitsky single obstruction. And then what I want to advertise is um, the, uh, what you'd have to do to get an analog for smooth. <clears throat> and it, in, or, in order to do that, what I'll, I'll, um, I'll illustrate this idea that the surgery sequence is, is just our, our best description of what comes out of the technicality. It's very often not the best tool. I mean, you saw that in Darwin's lecture, that if you're interested in manifolds up to diffeomorphism or something like that, then surgery is not a great tool because it fixes the homotopy type. And fixing, solving and fixing the homotopy type and then undoing that, that constraint is really awful. And there's usually a much better direct path if you're interested in, uh, in a question like that. Surgery is not a cure-all for a lot of these things. It's very powerful when it works, but not when it doesn't. So, <laughs> well, you, you have to, you, you have, I mean, this was news to me. Um, so I was a, a student in the late 60s when, um, you know, the, the air was blowing with uh, all these direct developments in surgery theory. And, um, you know, every four years, uh, there would be a field metal, and, or maybe two, in surgery theory. So it was hugely active. And we really did think that it was a, a gigantic, you know, huge answer. And it was doing great things. Well, it turned out that um, there are just not that many great things that you can do with surgery. And if you start, <laughs> if you start trying to use it on more free-form problems, then it is pretty clearly a very clumsy way to go about it. So, um, so I want to suggest a, uh, I'll come back and, and uh, suggest a geometric problem that goes back to some um, wild ideas of Dennis Sullivan in 1970 and suggest how you might get to that by tinkering with the surgery sequence in order to make it do a different job. And the job I wanted to do is the smooth analog of the Renitsky single obstruction. So I want to describe how that works. All right, 
Well, the story starts with, um, as so often is the case, if you have a great theorem, then you define the thing, you give a name to the thing that the theorem applies to. Right? This is a very vulnerable, venerable tradition. So we define normal space. Is uh, X the empirical vibration and uh, rho from, all right, this is going to be N, K, rho, D, N plus K modulus boundary into the time space of uh, this empirical vibration. So that's the data that seems to give something good. So it's degree one now, yeah? That's what you, mm -hmm. yes, you well, X doesn't have... So now we define... that this is 
is a cat product with um, rose or sono plant of D, cat, tom, so that's what we have defined to be the fundamental class of X. So we, we have a stable, uh, we have a map of spaces which realizes that, um, that duality function. I mean, this is, we think of this as a defective duality. This is, if, if it was a Poincaré space, that would be an isomorphism. Well, it isn't, and so it's not an isomorphism, but um, we think of that as defective duality, uh, which sort of uh, suggests our, uh, our urgent desire to fix that. We want to make it a real duality. Is isomorphism between the homology of X and U. Uh -huh. You say that U and X are the same homology, right? How generally yep. holds, does this hold? I mean, the well, X is a, U is a regular name of it. Okay. So it has the same homotopy type of this. That's part of the homology you get from there. I, I, used, I, I said this at the very beginning of the lecture, that you choose a regular neighborhood. We're thinking about regular neighborhoods of X and some big death. I, didn't, I guess I didn't repeat it, but I used the same letter. So. <laughs> okay, well. <clears throat> we can define a, a, a point array structure on the normal space. It's um, L, N, minus 1. It's a 
surgery group again. So, um, what I'll, I'll do uh, two quick things before we get uh, The first thing I'll do, I want to explain in what sense, uh, what this means for the defective duality in X. Okay? So, and then the second thing is I want to give you an example uh, of a normal space that comes from the ordinary surgery period. So, um, duality. Well, we have the homology of X mapping to homology of Y. And we have this. Oh. Y, X, I know. Uh -huh. This is the bad duality. Okay. That comes from N minus star of X, the cohomology. This is F lower star. What then give this a name? Well, obviously it's this. Um, well, on cohomology, you get an induced map going the other way. And then here, we have the intersection with fundamental factor y. And because it's required to be degree 1, this commutes. And this is an isomorphism. So, a point array structure essentially describes a bad duality as a conjugate of a good duality. Um, and then we may or may not come back to this picture for other um, for other homology theories. But anyway, that's it. That's the sense in which a structure uh, sort of improves or this says that the duality is really nice in some sense. And here's an example. Suppose you have M with X. Now this is oh now this is point for A. And this is a degree one normal map in the usual structure sense. Well, I have a choice between showing, well, I'll, I'll 
So what's the normal structure? Um, we have Vn, S, N, cross I. Um, well, the mapping cylinder of this bundle map, B from the normal bundle of M to C, this is a bundle, uh, an M bundle, over the cylinder. <clears throat> and um, the fact that, uh, well, we know that the Tom space on one end of the Tom space of the root M, Tom space of C, um, this commutes. Of uh, this commute, after uh, after we use the the mystery thing to identify, um, maybe I should put that in. This is the uh, uniqueness part of the spivac of the uh, product theorem. Okay. This is the mystery um, isomorphism. So uh, what that means is that there's a Vn plus K cross I mapping into the Tom space of this uh, bundle, cylinder B, that gives you the standard thing on each end, and we divide out by the end to get Vn plus K plus 1 mapping into the Tom space of cylinder B modulo cylinder of C uh, Tom space whoops Tom space of C union to the Tom space of mu M. So this is the this is the um, appropriate thing to use for a normal space with boundary. So this defines it as a normal space. Uh, dimension n plus 1 with uh, m union x as boundary. So it's a normal space with point rate boundary. And the theorem, uh, the result will be, we show you how to use the pi time theorem pretty quickly to show that if this thing has a a point array structure on it, well boundary, then you actually get a normal organism of an animal. <clears throat> okay, and a very short story about this. Um, this. This development has a very checkered history, and I first started it, I guess, around 1970. And um, so I had, I get had an announcement in the bulletin about these things. And I, well, I submitted it to the bulletin, and then Theo was the referee, or reviewer. It wasn't referee. In fact, the proof was wrong. But, uh, that's another story. So, um, but Atia had received a preprint from um, Rockland, of, um, I think it was Rockland, about um, a similar result. But I knew this was wrong because he didn't have the dimension shift in the surgery stuff. And so I argued that. So, uh, but his preprint, I mean, in those days, you know, the, in the Soviet Union, they didn't have access to a uh, copy machine. Well, of course, the math department of Princeton was also pretty backward, but we had memory maps. Um, but they didn't have any way to copy things. So what Akia got was a carbon copy of a TypeScript in Russia. <laughs> so, um, Brother and I conjectured which section the error would be in, and we commissioned a, a translation. And it turned out we guessed wrong. But, um, well, anyway. Uh, 
It just illustrates how different things are. <laughs> okay, so uh, next time I'll, I'll uh, complete this by showing that if you have a structure on this, this normal space, then you then you get a solution of the original manifold circuit column, and then show you how uh, pretty quickly actually um, how to get the identity of structure.